Good morning, everyone. Um, I am, John, I'm sorry, I'm wearing the equivalent of a sport coat, and you'd think I'd know by now, so Je millennial jean jacket next time. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, already amazing conversation, um, and really excited to share this case study with you guys. Um, so just by a show of hands, how many of you have ever shopped at a sunglass hut here? Yeah, that's, that's always what we like to see. It is a heritage brand. We've been around for 52 years. Um, and I think what's really interesting is, as Essilor looks at it as a whole, I always love coming to these conferences because when you look at people and you're, you're telling them where you work, and I say, yeah, you know, I work at Luxottica, it's very clear if someone knows who Luxottica is or who they are, who we aren't. So I oversee uh, global media for our Sun Retail, so Sunglass Hut and Solaris. Um, but we have quite a few brands under our portfolio, just a few of them here on the screen, um, but Ray-Ban, Oakley, Lenscrafters, Pearl Vision, Target Optical, Persol, Oliver People, um, but we also own quite a few of the licenses, so brands like Prada, Versace, Michael Kors, Tory Burch, so really quite a few uh, brands in the category. Um, but what's really interesting, and I always love the Retail Summit, is really the benefit of having the retail locations like a Sunglass Hut, a Lenscrafters, Pearl Vision is we get to sell all of our products plus other brands as well. Um, so what was really interesting is working in, in paid media. Um, you know, it's a very oversaturated market. We're all in retail here. We know how oversaturated it is. And the eyewear market as well, especially has become in the last few years inc incredibly crowded. We have quite a few DT, uh, direct to consumer brands that took a social first approach, many of which are competitors we very much keep an eye on. And we were doing everything we knew to do. We were doing standard media, online video, great assets, um, which is fine, but when is, when is fine not enough anymore? Um, the campaigns performed above benchmark, um, but we hit a point of plateau. It, we weren't in exciting the consumer, we weren't creating the impact that we were really aiming to do so. Um, so we really had to also, like I said, fight in this very crowded market. You know, and anyone who's seen my presentations before, I love a good GIF, you know, let's keep it light here. <laughs> but it's very crowded. We have quite a few competitors. And then we also have, of course, big conglomerates that are also selling products. Let's look at an Amazon where you can get it delivered in two days. So we needed to find that point of differentiation. And I realized we didn't need a new playbook. We actually needed to go back to our roots. And when I asked that question of how many of you have ever been to a sunglass hut, I hope many of you have actually been in the store. And we were at the National Sales Summit. Uh, this, the first one that I attended was in 2022. It was actually in 20, or in 2021. In, uh, it's 2022. In 2023, we were there. Um, here's a picture. Um, and this summit is where we actually have store managers, regional managers, zone vice presidents, um, the people who are on the ground and with our consumers. It is three days of sessions, um, hearing from them, hearing their challenges, um, watching people actually role play what their in-store experience and how to uh, approach customers differently. Um, and we realized while we were there, this is what sets our brand apart. And we needed to be leaning more into what our roots were. The two things that really you know, make us different. One, we have best-in-class sales associates. And I am biased, of course I work here, but if you've ever been to a Sunglass Hut location, I hope you've had that amazing experience. Our sales associates know the product and they care about what they are selling. There is quite a bit that the organization invests in education for our sales associates in the field because they want that experience to be as uh, engaging as possible when you walk into a, a Sunglass Hut location. They know based on your face shape what is the best kind of product, the way that it should sit on your face? Should you look more for a cat eye? Does it look better if you have a square top with a rounded bottom? They are trained in that. And that store experience is how we get people to not only convert, but to be loyal and love the brand. But also our in-person services. I actually, my Uber driver yesterday was telling me, he's like, yeah, I just recently bought sunglasses, a, a sunglass hut. He's like, and I already scratched the lens. And I was like, oh, j just go to the store. We'll fix it. Simple as that, but so many people don't know those things that it, it's free if you go to a store to have it fixed, and if they can't fix it, they'll replace it. We also have customization services. I'm stealing some of the thunder for the back of my presentation, but 
those are the sorts of things that I think we needed to think about that campaign imagery and, you know, creative assets where we're showing our products, they're great, but they're not making us stand out. So, like I said, I'm not gonna read, as you can see, these are very long, but these are all just reviews that I pulled, you know, there's from the last year, um, all of which actually aren't talking about the products or the location, but they're talking about the sales associates. In every single one of these, the sales associate is called out by name, which I thought was really interesting. And that's something that the first thing that they think about in these trainings is introducing yourself to your customer because it does create that relationship. So we wanted to, you know, have, like I said, this, this uh, convening where we pulled in all the experts. So at this point, we had had quite a few relationships with multiple vendors. And what we did is we actually uh, tasked the partners with going to a sunglass hut store. Um, we reached out to them, we sent them gift cards, and we wanted them to go experience that in-store experience. Uh, we had endemic partners, we had social partners, we had audio partners and podcast partners. Um, we thought that was a really good place to start. We had done quite a few uh, campaigns where we had measured that they did perform from a store traffic perspective. We wanted to see if this just further helped make the difference in increasing that traffic to store. And then we also had to pull in multiple internal stakeholders because to do this, we can't just, you know, we are a paid media center of excellence, but to do something like this requires all of us to get together. PR, the product team, we pulled store managers onto calls to ask them, you know, does this make sense? Do you think this is a great way to showcase that in-store experience? They are on the ground. Your sales associates, your store managers, they are the ones who are interacting with customers on a daily basis. So it really involved making sure that everyone was up to speed and to QA that what we were putting into the market was an accurate story of their everyday experience. So I have quite a few examples here. I'm gonna cut some of them short, but this is the first that we did. And we actually did this during holiday. So we know of course holiday is also overtly crowded, um, but sunglasses make a really good gift. And it's not something that I think people immediately think of top of mind. And there's also some great services that we have that you'll hear. Um, that make it a great gift, and we wanted to showcase that. So this was the first. It was with an endemic fashion partner. This was with the partner who will wear. Um, we also have done stuff uh, with Marie Claire. And you can see specifically in the copy highlighted in yellow, I know it's very small, but the first uh, paragraph in it was, we sent the editors to the store locations to pick out gifts for XYZ. We had all the imagery shot in store, of which we had them then share it on their socials. So using our stores as the backdrop for our actual creative to show that experience and have it written about in an endemic environment. The other benefit of something like this is we could also tag it. So as all of you I'm sure have to deal with, um, you need to show numbers. We need to show business outcome numbers. So for us, our KPI being foot traffic, we were able to pixel this article living on the website, all of the uh, traffic drivers, et cetera, that allowed us to show the benefit and the increase, and I'll, at the end, I do have metrics for you, I promise I'm not showing, you know, nothing with metrics here. Um, what did it actually yield in terms of an uplift by changing to this strategy? The other that we did was live stream, and this was actually a personal favorite, and um, this was run by my team, uh, Ricky Venezia, she's the manager for North America. Um, and I'll play some short snippets for you guys, but you can see it's specifically shot in the store location and we also did it in our renovated stores so that we could show kind of our new brand feel, very luxurious, also making sure that we're supporting our realtor team. They are investing a lot in these store redesigns. Let's make sure we're showing it nationally. And we were just talking about how gorgeous this LA Beverly Hills sunglasses store is. I feel like I'm at a runway show. To no, me. truly. It's, it's like the sunglasses look like a work of art. Yes, no, really it's great. so pretty. And we're just so excited to be shopping yes. with you guys today. The cool part about today too, is that you can shop anything we yep. talk about, all the sunglasses we talk about, live right here on the live stream. You click on the product, it will take you out to Sunglass Hut and you yeah. can check out there. Yeah. So again, we're just calling out the store location. Everything was shoppable. We could tag it. It was great for us to start showing ROI. The other thing that we then did, this was a 30 minute live stream. We had uh, actually thousands of attendees, which is always wonderful. And then it lived on the Who What Wear website throughout the holiday season in which they were driving traffic. So further amplification to really give it legs. Um, okay. Yeah. okay, let's get started. Yes, let's okay, do it, let's do it. Okay, perfect. So we are gonna start with 
some classic styles. Classics. One and of my favorites, actually. Yes. Judith and I are so excited about these. Yes. <laughs> They're so these good. are the Ray Ban Mega Wayfarers. Mm -hmm. I have the black pair, and Elise has the tortoise shell. These are just like your classic everyday. So, cool, really talking about mm -hmm. the product, sunglasses. how to style yeah. it, the, similar the to what really the sales associate these, would do in the I store. Think, is that they make every outfit cooler, first of all. Every outfit. But they are fully customizable. Yes. So, you can get your initials on the frames, yes. the lenses, the temples. We've got them here at the yeah. tip of the temple. So this is a 30 minute live stream. I won't make you watch all of it, I promise. But again, just using these sorts of mediums to talk about our services, customization. Many people don't know that that's an option, that we have quite a few pair of Ray-Bans that can be customized. You can customize the temple, you can pick the lens color, you can pick the frame color, you can have it engraved, you can have the case engraved. Great gifts. These are very hard to portray in just standard imagery assets or short form video, which we know is really where the industry is moving. So we needed to find long form content that allowed us to tell that brand story. The other thing we did is podcast hosts and podcasts have always been very successful for us, but we wanted to make that connection. So we sent quite a few podcast hosts. Um, we had a very large focus on female for the holidays. Um, we are really working on growing um, our female fan base. Um, and we had a variety of ages as well. We had um, some Gen Z, we had some millennials, we had a little bit of an older uh, audience here, so we made sure that we were hitting across the board. No matter what they're into, you're bound to find something memorable thanks to their holiday selection that includes styles from the biggest brands like Prada, Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, Ray-Ban, Oakley, Burberry. Their wide range of sunglasses cover some of the hottest brands, Plus, their curated hol holiday collection includes... Oh, I'm going to have to go back. So the beginning feels very scripted. And it is a script because we do have to hit our, our talking points. Let me, is there a way to go back? There we go. But it's actually when she starts talking. She talks for almost two minutes after this about the store experience. Eh, let's see. No matter what they're into, Sorry, you're bound to find something to memorable thanks to their holiday you know, selection seconds. that includes styles from the biggest brands like Prada, Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, Ray-Ban, Oakley, Burberry. Their wide range of sunglasses cover some of the hottest brands, plus their curated hol holiday collection includes 10 shades only available at Sunglass Hut. I went to the flagship Sunglass Hut in New York City on Fifth Avenue a couple of days ago. I got four pairs of sunglasses. I got you two pairs because I'm a nice sister. Um, let me tell you what a fabulous experience. You got four? Yeah. Oh, I got two. Okay, let me explain math to you. I got four. Love a good I hope two for you. Love. You guys, that was confusing. Was it? No. I think we all understood. Okay. But let me Sorry tell you. Comment. Let me tell you. I had the best time. They shipped directly to you. Mm -hmm. I in store. They're like it's three to five days. They're, so they're probably gonna be waiting for you at your house when you get home. Wendy, my sales associate, was amazing. She was like helping me like figure out my face shape because my face shape has changed and like this glasses so true. I, the glasses I would normally flock to like the oversized ones. She's like those don't work for you. So true. What's your face shape now? I don't know what my face shape is, but she says I really like have a good face for a square top round bottom. Mm. Yeah, so it was just really helpful to like learn things. And also Sunglass Hut just has amazing, I was telling her, I'm like, why am I always shopping at Sunglass Hut at the airport? And she's like, cause you're always going somewhere fabulous and you need a new pair of sunglasses. Wendy, she understands you like no other. No, she was fab. And you know, during the holiday they do engraving and they can service your products if anything breaks. Like it's really, um, it's such an underrated activity shopping for sunglasses. Oh, it's so fun. So. Like I said, we we had we gave them a script. There were definitely talking points we wanted to hit, but we sent them to the store so that they could experience that firsthand. She calls out Wendy by name, who is the Fifth Ave store manager and is fantastic. On multiple occasions, we have actually sent people because we do work with a lot of influencers in New York, and every single one of them talks about her by name in in their assets. Uh, they talk about the services, the engraving, and it wasn't that we specifically told them they needed to do that. It's that we had the sales associates, and we said show them the Sunglass Hut experience, provided them options, did the education about the face shape and how to um, find the right frame for your face shape. And this did phenomenally. I have, like I said, metrics at the end, but we saw a very large significant increase in foot traffic compared to the previous holiday where we were just talking about our campaign messaging, listing our brands like she did in the beginning. It made it much more engaging. So this is also from an influencer perspective. Gen Z, we have to be on TikTok. Fingers crossed about, you know, let's see what happens this week with Senate. But sending them to the store, sending editors to the store, having them shoot their content in store and including it as part of their day in the life um, so that they can show different styles, really great way. And then 
we also did artificial reality. Artificial reality, we are Luxottica, try on lens is a must. Um, but we made it a little bit more personalized. So as you were trying it on, you can see where the arrow, arrows are pointing. It shows your nearest store location. So if I'm trying something on within the mobile environment, I can see if I really loved this pair. Oh, this is available at Sunglass Hut Fifth Ave. Um, so really just connecting that in store to the paid advertising, we've seen great success with. So I can't just say we're seeing great success. I wanted to show you guys actually what this has yielded for us. So, so far from this, oh, very small, but uh, our in-store focused endemic content, so what you saw with who, what, where, uh, drove 31,000 visits to store during the campaign flight. Um, we you do use a third-party measurement partner um, so that we can, we don't believe in grading your own homework. Um, but I thought what was actually more interesting here is that the audiences who were exposed to the in-store content um, were plus 323% more likely to visit a store than audiences who were not exposed um, and were only exposed to standard editorial. So really huge uplift there for new buyers and making that connection with them to show the, the store experience. Um, the creators, the content that I showed you with the TikTok content creators, the creators that did capture their content going into store location saw a 29% increase in ad engagement versus um, TikTok influencers who did not go into the store and just used our products as part of the day in the life. So again, huge uplift there for us. Our podcast host reads, in which they talked about their in-store experience and gifting ideas, saw plus 126% increase in influence store visits versus our general messaging from the previous campaign. So again, it does work. I wasn't just showing you, you know, assets without showing it works. And then artificial reality, try on calling out the nearest store location, had a 200, was 200% more efficient than campaigns that did not call in the dynamic store location for the asset that we were using. So overall, really just connecting that in-store experience to what we were doing in paid has yielded not just more exciting assets, which is always great for presentations like this, but actual business outcomes. And that is all with a beautiful screen here. Caroline, I don't think we could have planned the timing any better. So kudos yes. to that. Appreciate Amazing, it. even without a stopwatch, I was on. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I want to kick it off with a question. So um, I love that you mentioned Wendy by name, right? And I think engaging our field is so critical because they are the frontline associates. Yeah. How did that activation and partnership come about? Was it natural? Was it organic? Did your team go to be like, hey, Wendy, we need you to you know, step up your game kind of thing? No, she, and if the slide in which I had um, reviews on there, there's actually two specifically calling out her. We just told them that we had people coming to the store. Uh, we didn't tell them it was for paid media. Um, we did tell them that there was gift cards. Um, and that was, that was it. It was, that is truly just the in-store experience. And that is, like I said, going back to the beginning, it's the roots of the brand is our in-store experience and our best in class sales associates. We trust and we know that they are going to deliver that experience especially with our flagships, there is a lot of rigorous training that goes in, into our on the ground field team. Um, they are required to do a certain number of educational hours per month. Um, and there's a lot of education that um, Luxottica invests in, which I feel very lucky to be a, a, at an organization that does so, not just for field, but also for the corporate team about these sorts of things, not just product education, which is very important, face shape, et cetera, but interaction, um, mental health, how to create relationships with your customers, questions you can ask, not about, you know, to get them in the right product, but to make them feel like you actually care about them. It, it is ingrained within the sunglass culture. We call it our KCIs, and it, it bleeds through. If you've ever been, I, I hope you have experienced it. I've seen it firsthand. I call it Wendy by name because I've actually been a customer. I gone to the Miami location because I've forgotten sunglasses on a trip. And without telling them I worked there, introduced it himself. His name is Mario. He is wonderful. If you're in Miami, go absolutely go to those locations as well. Um, but it's just part of, part of the culture. And so, yeah, we didn't have to tell her. We just knew that was going to be a great experience. Very cool. Uh, any other questions? Hi, I'm Lori from Data Axel. Um, so when you're rolling out an influencer program, are you just like for 
again, for ROI, how do you know it was attributed to the influencers? Is it just one store that you pick or to see if that works and then you go from there? I'm just, yeah, it always absolutely. fascinates me. So it depends on where we're running. So if it's with an endemic um, partner, such as a Who, What, Where, um, we've run with the Cut in the past, et cetera, uh, that we do use third-party measurement. So we use a partner um, pixel-based that allows us to do attribution. Um, if it is true TikTok where we cannot place a pixel, however that is changing, um, we use brand lift studies um, to see what the uplift is there in terms of that. Um, so what you saw for the content creator um, asset was from a brand lift study, uh, from the endemic and from the podcast and from the AR, all of that is third party measured in terms of actual influenced attributed foot traffic. We have time for one more question. Hi, Natalie Olson from Neiman Marcus Group. I'm curious about how this changed the conversation with some of your brand partners, so like the Pradas of the world that are producing these more traditional editorial assets, and as you're seeing more traction with these different, newer, more modern media types, like they still want to run those traditional media types. How are you balancing that? Um, yeah, so I think it's a twofold conversation. The first is allowing them to create the halo. Um, and I, I think that's a great example of allowing them to create that scale in those sorts of environments of brand recognition. And we use these to then showcase, by the way, we sell Versace at Sunglass Hut. So they're creating that awareness of the brand, especially you know a lot of out of home, digital video, standard assets, endemic partnerships where they do you know run of sites, run of networks create the awareness of, oh, wow, oh, I saw those pairs of Versace, and we're then creating that connection of, by the way, you can buy them here. Um, it has also been you know, education on our part. We do have brands now that, just this week, we had a brand recently approach us and say, hey, we would love to do an in-store live stream. Um, so it is, I think, obviously, as an even Mark's group, I'm sure, there's a lot of education and a lot of conversations, but it's just having that open dialogue as well as having the metrics to back up why this is a benefit potentially to them. Perfect. Caroline, thank you so much. Thank you, guys.